Hello, beautiful people. And welcome to what I guess is a Kazuha Mythbuster. Hell yeah, dude. I love myth busting. Woohoo! I I've seen a lot of, um, I don't know what to call it, misinformation, inaccurate information, bad takes, call it whatever you want, uh, circulating about Kazuha. And I kind of want to take a little bit of time to address them. So yeah, the, the, the first one is the idea that Kazuha's absorption on his plunge attack is, uh, is a swirl. The reality is that it is very much not a swirl. Let me show you what I mean. My Kazuha is at, right, zero on all the damage percent except animal. If I do this, this, right? I got a Pyro Infusion, right? And yet, if I go to my details, I have the Hydro Damage, but I don't have the Pyro Damage. Because indeed, Kazuha's Absorption, the color of, of, the, of his Plunge Attack, doesn't necessarily mean you get a swirl of that element. The way that his, that his Plunge Attack works is relatively straightforward. You do the damage with your Infusion or Absorption, right? The element you're absorbing, before you do the Animo Damage. Okay, so. As you can see, when I do this, he doesn't have an element on him anymore, but if I plunge attack, I do get a swirl, right? Even if he didn't have an element on him, I still got a swirl. The reason is because the pyro part of that plunge attack hits before the animal part. So you get pyro, and then the animal part hits, and that triggers a swirl after the pyro is applied, so you get a pyro swirl. But what happened in the, in the first instance where I showed this is the enemy had a Hydro Aura when I did my Plunge Attack. The enemy was still affected with Hydro from Sing Cho when I did my Plunge Attack. And what that means is Kazuha's Plunge will start by doing the Pyro damage, but the enemy is affected with Hydro, so the Pyro is going to vaporize and remove the Aura. And then you're just going to not get a Swirl because there's not going to be an element on the enemy anymore. look at this. We get our Hydro Swirl at the beginning, but when we fall down, we get a Vaporize from the Pyro Infusion that removes the Aura, and then our Animal Damage isn't triggering a Swirl, right? These Pyro Numbers are from me getting hit by the, by the Breath. When I Swirl, we can see it earlier, right? We can see it right here. When I Swirl, I deal 5.5k damage but i don't get a 5.5k on the way down because we just didn't get a swirl there right because of the way that his infusion works like just getting a pyro absorption on your on your plunge attack isn't enough to get your pyro vb or your pyro damage bonus so a good way to remedy this is to use his hold e instead of his top e because his hold e will remove the Hydro Aura on the way up. And if there's no Hydro Aura on the enemy, on the way down, you're just gonna do the normal stuff and you're gonna apply Pyro and then Animo and you're gonna get a Pyro as well. The reason for that is because Kazuha's hold E is two units of Animo versus only one. It's elemental gauge. Basically, he removes more element with his hold E than just his top E. His top E won't actually be enough to remove all the element. The one thing that can fuck with it though is Singcho's Orbital's Hydro application. You can apply Hydro on the way down just with the orbital Hydro application, right? From these swords running around you. That can be enough to apply the element. And if you do that, then you're gonna get a Hydro Swirl. You're not gonna get a Pyro Swirl and you'll only have swirled one of your two elements. And that's why, personally, when it comes to Kazuha in national teams with Sing Cho and Xiang Ling and Bennett, I don't actually like uh, using Kazuha over Sucrose because the setups become more reliant on whether or not the enemy will walk into your uh, your Rain Sword orbitals. And it's a lot harder to do it consistently. Whereas with Sucrose, you can just rely on a Sucrose specific mechanic called Global Swirl, which we're not going to be covering in this video. But hey, if you want to know about it, you can check me out at twitch.tv slash the Jeff 77 and you can ask me in person. <laughs> so let's move on to the second myth, which is that Crit Kazuha does more damage than EM Kazuha. Here's a very, very well kept secret of the theory crafting communities that theory crafters don't want you to know. And that quote unquote secret is that swirl damage ignores enemy defense. There's a difference between resistance and defense. Resistance is an enemy specific st stat that, for example, the Primo Geo Bishop 
has different resistance values than, I don't know, than the electro hypostasis. Defense is something that scales with enemy level. The way that defense is calculated in this game for enemy defense, it looks at your level and the enemy's level. And if you're over leveled compared to the enemy, it makes you do more damage. Oh. It's not exactly more damage. It always makes you do less damage. But if you're over leveled, it doesn't nerf your damage as much. Whereas if you're under leveled or the same level, it can nerf your damage. The actual formula for it, it has your, your level, enemy level, and it does your level plus 100 divided by ignoring defense defense reduction for now 200 plus your level plus enemy level the baseline is 0.5 and as long as you're the same level as the enemy it's always going to be 0.5 so your damage is divided by two in late game you'll be level 90 enemies in abyss 12 3 are level 100 so it's still around divided by two if you're if your characters are lower level uh it can be a bigger nerf but Transformative reaction damage, so swirl, overload, electrocharge, superconduct, doesn't actually look at defense. Transformative damage ignores defense altogether, which means when you're calculating resistance, if you don't know about this mechanic, you'll basically be underestimating the swirl damage by, by half, or overestimating the non-swirl damage by two times, right? Now, the amount of swirls can actually vary wildly. Kazuha can swirl on a few different attacks, right? He can can swirl with his E one time on the way up, one time on the way down. And then with his burst, one time from the initial burst, and then an additional five times from the damage over time. But swirl kind of works weirdly. When you're in single target, I do my E, I get one instance of swirl damage. But when you're in AoE, right? So you look at this plunge, right? My swirl on these Whopper Flowers is doing 3.1k damage. Count the amount of 3.1ks we see. I mean, obviously it's really low quality. I'm sorry about that. My bit rate is kind of shit, but we get four instances of swirl just from that plunge attack. When you're in AoE, your swirls can actually deal damage more than once. There is a hard limit at two. You will not be doing or nine swirls total or three swirls per enemy when you're against three enemies. It's going to be a six total, still two per enemy. But as long as you're in against more than one target, your swirls will be doing the, your, their damage twice each. Now, this is where you can make an argument for crit Kazuha. Because EM Kazuha's damage is mostly included in the swirls, if you're in single target, then crit Kazuha will generally do slightly more damage than EM Kazuha. However, that is not Kazuha's strength. Single target isn't really the reason you put Kazuha on your team. And even then, the, da the damage buff will still be better. But let's, for now, ignore the single target scenario and come back to it later. So, in a usual Kazuha situation, his E is a 6 second cooldown, or 9 if you hold it. His burst is a 15 second cooldown. You'll generally try to line up your rotations so that you get two E's and one burst per rotation. So how many instances of swirl do you get? Well, you get two from each E, so that's four, and then you get six from your burst, right? One plus the five damage over time instances. So that's another six, so that's 10. But then if you're in AoE, that's double, right? Each one is hitting twice. So we're getting 20 total swirls. So let's actually take a look at how much damage Kazuha gets. This is gonna be a bit of a, of a long calc, so the editors will be able to fast forward this. <laughs> As you can see, okay, by the way, YouTube viewers, I made a typo in my calc like three times in a row. So I've had to retake what I'm saying multiple times. And so I'm very, very exhausted. I want to fucking move on, but I'll do it again. Okay. Even on the full EM build, right? When you're getting that 187 elemental mastery on all three of your main stats. If you're losing out on your attack sense, your crit sense, you're also getting, uh, sorry, your crit circulate, you're also getting lower crit value overall because EM artifacts are more rare. So you're probably not gonna get as good artifact quality. You're losing out on that animo damage bonus that is somewhere here. Because of the EM gain, you're still doing more damage with the EM build than with the 
crit build. Now, when it comes to a uh, single target, you'll be doing more damage with the crit build, but it's not really worth it because Kazuha's niche isn't single target and you're still losing out on all the buffs from his Ascension 4 to the rest of your team. So realistically, if you're gonna farm one set for Kazuha, because okay, it is fine to have one crit set and one EM set for Kazuha if you really like him. So when you're in single target, when you're against the boss, you can put him on the crit set. But when you're in AoE, when you're not against the boss, you can put him on the EM set. But if you're only gonna be farming one set for your Kazuha, you're significantly better off farming for the EM set. I, I know that there's a lot of people that build crit Kazuha because they really like Kazuha and they want to treat him right and all that shit. They, they triple crown him because they think they, they think he deserves it and all that. That's cool. But when you're doing that, you're actively making him less damage than if you went on an EM build. Even if you aren't a crit build, you should really, really go for VV. Here's why. Let's say you gain the 18% attack from two-piece gladiators because you're going two-piece viridescent, two-piece gladiator. Oh, well, what do you lose? Well, you lose, you lose the 60% swirl damage and just that is already enough to make it worse. But that's not all. On top of the 60% swirl damage, you're also not reducing resistance anymore for both your swirl damage and your uh, infusion damage. And so you're actually doing significantly less damage if you're not going for VV, even on the crit build. Now, there's ways that make the EM build a lot better. For example, one of the things that animal units are best at is causing chain reactions. A swirl spreads its element, but that spread element can create chain reactions. And when reactions are triggered by a swirl, then they look at the animal unit's elemental mastery. For example... Alright, so as you can see... We're getting some 14k overloads. Wow! Ain't that sick? 14k overloads. Right? That's Kazuha triggering a train reaction. On top of that, when we're in an electrocharge team, right? Right, so we get our swirl damage, but we also get our electro charge damage. Uh, they're like overlap, but we get 5.5k and 9.8k. You can still trigger chain reactions in single target. All of this to say, there's ways that can make you trigger a lot more reactions with your animal units. When you play things like that, you end up dealing a fuck ton more damage, and it's damage that scales with your elemental mastery. So it ends up favoring the elemental mastery build even more than the baseline. That's the second misconception out of the way. Crit Kazuha does not do more damage than EM Kazuha. With that out of the way, right? We did these comparisons with Arm Instinct because it's the weapon that focuses on his damage the most out of the four star weapons. But does that mean it's the best weapon for Kazuha? No, it does not. I would argue that Iron Sting is Kazuha's third best four-star weapon. In some situations, it can be the best. But those situations are relatively few and far between. So, misconception number three. Is Iron Sting Kazuha's best four-star weapon? No. Why is that? Let's talk about energy. When it comes to Kazuha, his burst is, by a pretty long shot, his best talent. He gets a lot more damage from his burst than he gets from his skill and plunge attacks and normal attacks. His burst is the biggest part of his damage. So what happens when you don't get your burst? Well, you lose out on most of your damage. In other words, if you want to be making the best out of your Kazuha, you need to have enough energy recharge to use his burst when necessary. But how much is enough? And this question is a huge pain in the ass to answer because the way that energy generation works in this game, it's not just animal particles give energy to animal characters and that's it. Each particle gives energy to each character is just a different amount if it's the same element or a different element. I've compiled a sheet of a few different teams that use Kazuha and his ER requirements in those teams. In Meld Ganyu, it's about 230. In Mono Pyro, about 210. In International, about 205. In Huta VV Vape, about 200. In Ayaka, if you don't have Fab on your second Cryo unit, so like your Shenha or your Rosaria, uh, it's about 190. In Ayaka, when you do have Fab on your second Cryo, uh, it's about 160. In Taser, it's about 140. In Right on Hyper, it's about 120. If you're playing Kazuha in one of these teams, Ayaka with a Fav like Lance on your Rosaria or Shenha, or Taser, or Right on Hyper, right? In one of these teams, or other teams that, aren't include, that are not included here, that have relatively low energy uh, requirements, then yeah, Iron Sink can be a very good weapon. But even starting at, on this one, right? 160 energy recharge 
is pretty difficult to reach with only your sub stats. The reality is, the rarest main stat for both Goblet and Circlet is Elemental Mastery. Which means, especially when you're only looking for one sub stat, in this case Energy Recharge, if you only have one good possible roll, and your main stat is relatively rare to begin with, it can become relatively difficult to reach the amount of ER you need. 160 with good luck, basically doable. 190 or higher is honestly arguably impossible. So what would you do? Well, you would run an ER sense. You'd slap this on your Kazuha. Now that, wow, easy, right? Just like that, I'm at 190. But here's the thing. Like we said earlier, most of Kazuha's damage when you build him correctly, which is on the EM build, comes from his swirl damage. That means that attack and crit and base attack and damage percent, right, isn't as significant as it otherwise could be. What is important will be elemental mastery and energy recharge. So, how much energy recharge do you get from a sense? At plus 20, 51.8. And how much elemental mastery do you gain from Iron Sting? At level 90, your Iron Sting will give you 165. So you get 51.8% energy recharge and 165 elemental mastery. But what happens if instead of going ER sense EM weapon, you go EM sense ER weapon? But what's an EM sense? 187 elemental mastery. And what's an ER weapon? All right, we look at Sack Sword, 61.3. We look at Fav Sword, 61.3. So we get 61.3 energy recharge. Effectively, we're getting slightly less base attack, 454 instead of the 510 we get from Iron Sting. But as we said, that doesn't matter too much. What matters a lot more is that we get more energy recharge and more elemental mastery. But then on top of that, the damage percent you get from Iron Sting is not all that valuable because a significant portion of Kazuha's damage comes from Swirls, which doesn't get increased by Iron Sting damage bonus. But what about the Favonius and the Sack Sword passive? Well, the Favonius passive is arguably the best passive in the game. Not only does it reduce Kazuha's energy requirements by a significant amount because you get those clear particles, but also it reduces the rest of your team's energy requirements. Getting a Favonius proc generates energy for your whole team. A bit more for the character that catches the par those particles than for characters that don't catch them, but still a pretty fucking high amount overall. And that's pretty valuable. In a lot of teams where you're playing Kazuha, you're playing him with relatively energy-hungry units, right? If we look at the teams that I compiled, your Ayaka, your Xiangling, your, your child will be able to run lower ER, which means they'll be able to run higher amounts of other stats, right? If they don't need ER, then they can try to go for EM or attack or crit. But even then, right, even without looking at this, the Favonius passive by itself saves you generally between 30 and 40 energy recharge. In teams that don't have very high ER requirements, it can be closer to 20, but those are teams where generally you could consider not running Fav. In the teams where you would run Fav, it's generally 30 to 40 ER. So effectively, your Fav sword isn't giving you 61.3 energy recharge, it's giving you 100, because it's, it's that 61.3 plus about 40 from lowering your energy requirements. It's incredibly significant. Now, the, what's the condition for Favsar? Well, you'll need to get a crit. But the nice thing about Kazuha is he gets a lot of hits. Especially in AoE, he gets a lot. Like, oh my Favsar, R3 Favsar, I have 27 crit rate. Oh, we got our proc here. Let's do it again. We didn't get our proc, of course we didn't get our fucking proc. Okay, you know, instead of showing it, I'm just gonna fucking explain it. Every single hit that you do has a chance to proc Fav. Your Kazuha's E will hit one time on the way down, up, oh, sorry, one time on the way down, and then the absorption also hits one time and can crit. So that's three hits from your E. And then your burst is one on the initial slash, and you generally get also one uh, damage over time before you swap out. So that's gonna be a total of another two hits, right? Because the damage over time is one animo, one, one absorption damage. That's another three hits from burst. So it's, it's a total of six hits total. At 25% crit rate on R1 against one enemy, the odds of proccing the Fav are about 80%. On two enemies, well, instead of getting six hits, you get 12 and it's 97%. On three enemies, 99%. You don't need to have a lot of crit rate to get reliable Fav procs on your Kazuha. All you need is a small amount of crit. The more crit you have, the more reliable it is. But at the end of the day, you really don't need that much. And that, that's with R1. If you have R5, it helps. Now, when it comes to Iron Sting, let's take a look at what happens if... Sorry, instead of EM, you run ER Sense. So, 
you're losing out on 187 elemental mastery um but also realistically right if you want to reach these values you're still going to need a lot of er rolls you're probably losing a little bit of em because of it let's say two rolls of em are going to, into er and a bunch of rolls of crit are going into er as well now let's take a look at what happens if instead of doing that you just go for a five sword our five sword is doing more damage than our iron instinct when we take a look at the substats saved with the Favonius passive, going five sword with EM sends is a lot more damage than going Iron Sting with ER sends. And then on top of that, you're getting those clear particles for the rest of your teams that are most likely going to be incredibly helpful. Uh, for Sack Sword, uh, you lose out on the crit requirement, so it's a lot easier to run Sack Sword than Fav Sword. And you still get the like energy, the the lowered energy requires because you get one more E. But you do end up extending your rotations because Kazula's E takes a pretty long time to resolve, right? And so it's not always just upside. But yes, if you are going for Sack Sword, Sack Sword is effectively the same stats as Fav Sword, so it is still doing more damage than your Iron Sting with an ER sense. Again, right? As a, as a very very um funneled in tldr of this if you are able to reach your energy requirements with iron sting then iron sting can be good but even then the fav effect helping the rest of your team is probably just still better and then on top of that if you aren't able to reach your er requirements without going er sends on iron sting and you have to go er sends you can't stay on em sends right then favonius swords with em send is just significantly better same for sack sword oh yeah also refinements on iron sting don't actually do very much we take a look this is r5 iron sting let's compare it to r1 our five refinements on iron sting have given us a total of two percent higher damage so each refinement is about 0 0.5 is it doing something yes technically but it's very insignificant and overall i wouldn't recommend it if you have a use for your billets elsewhere now let's move on to misconception number four which is that kazuha's e is more important to level than his normal attacks All right let's talk about kazuha's normal attacks as you can see, one hit damage, two hit damage, three hit damage, four hit damage, five hit damage, charge attack, charge attack, stamina cost, plunge damage, low high plunge damage. Plunge damage scales with normal attack talents. And when he infuses his next plunge attack with animo, plunging attack damage is converted to animo damage, but it's still the motion value that's decided by this talent. So effectively, leveling your skill from eight to nine you still adds 19% motion value. Whereas leveling your normal attack from eight to nine, you look at the high plunge damage because that's the one that's actually being used. It's not 19, it's 26. You're actually benefiting more from your plunge attack than from your E. Now, if you're holding your E, then you end up gaining 26 as well, and it ends up being a lot more balanced. But as a general rule, I would actually recommend leveling Kazuha's normal attack talents before his skill. On an elemental mastery build, talent levels don't matter too much. They're not useless, leveling them does do something, but it's not a particularly significant thing, and you don't really have a massive need to level them up. But if you are going to do it, the general talent priority would have the normal attack and the skill mostly the same with a slight bias towards the normal attack over the skill. But uh, the burst is by far the most damage you gain from, from talent increases, right? So you should, should still level the burst before the normal attacks. Uh, but yeah, um, one of the things that can lead to confusion in this is this plunge damage. This plunge damage is not what we're looking at. This is not what is actually doing the damage. This plunge damage refers to collision plunge or the damage that happens when you hit enemies while you're falling during a plunge attack. If I do a, a E here, right? We get a 95 and a 191. The 95 is plunge damage, the 191 is high plunge damage. It is possible that you get both a high plunge damage and a plunge damage. What you're always gonna get is the high plunge damage, and then the, the just normal plunge damage can be added on top of it, which would favor the normal attack over the skill even more. Effectively, right? Don't level your skill over your normal attack. You wanna level both? Cool. You wanna level neither? Cool. You wanna level only your skill? You're griefing. <laughs> okay, fifth Kazuha myth is that Kazuha's C1 fixes his energy problem. This one's a little bit more nuanced because it can. In a lot of rotations, it does fix his energy problems. But here's the thing. Effectively, the C1 acts very similarly to a Sack Sword. Even with the Sack Sword, even with that 
proc, right? That additional E. In a lot of teams, your ER requirements are still really high and it's not, it doesn't just fix it all together. You still need to build a lot of ER. But then on top of that, uh, which is also the downside of going Sack Sword over Fast Sword, his E takes a pretty long time to do. It feels good to do and you feel like you're doing something the whole time, but it does have a pretty long animation. And if you're playing your rotations uh, very well, then that can basically just add a whole second to a rotation. And if you're doing a 20 second rotation, adding one second to that is effectively a 5% DPS loss on your whole team, which can be pretty harsh. And also because well, it has a long animation time, so if you cast Bennett buff before you use your Kazuha, having to use his second E means you have less uptime on your Bennett buff on your other unit. Now, does it still help? Yeah, of course it does. But it is not nearly as much of a like problem solver. It's not, it doesn't completely quote unquote fix his ER requirements. Don't pull for C1 thinking it's just gonna make it so you can run zero ER. You're still gonna need some ER. And then on top of that, it's possible you won't be able to make use of it in some teams. So that's it for the five Kazuha myths busted, but we're gonna add myth number six, which is you need to pull for Kazuha. As usual, don't spend money on this shit game. <laughs> you don't need to pull for Kazuha. If you like Kazuha, he's definitely a good unit to go for, but he's definitely not necessary. In a lot of the teams where he's popular, he's just a side grade, sometimes even a downgrade to Sucrose. Uh, in some teams, he is an upgrade, right? Don't get me wrong, he's still a very valuable unit. And having two Sucroses, or having Sucrose plus Kazuha, you'll find a lot of situations where you want to run uh, both of them, each on a different team. But you don't need to pull for Kazuha. He's not the only unit you can pull for. My point is, there's not a single unit you ever, you'll ever need to pull for. If you don't care for Kazuha's gameplay, you don't care for um, for his visuals or whatever, right? And you don't want to pull him, but you feel like you have to because all you've heard is how good he is. Uh, I'm here to tell you that you don't have to. You'll be fine even if you don't. And if you want to pull someone else, go for it. That being said though, I personally really like Kazuha. I'm pretty happy I got him. So just make sure you're doing what you want. Don't feel forced to pull for him because of someone else, but also if you want to pull for him, knock yourself out. Uh, but yeah, that does it. Uh, thank you for dropping by. Yeah, I mean, I don't have an outro. Bye YouTube, I guess.